Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today for Why Accept Membership. Welcome to Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society's presentation on accepting membership. This presentation will cover who we are, our mission, and how you can become a member, um, and also what benefits you'll have access to as a member. So we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Paige Still, and I am the Membership Services Specialist for Division Three. And I also have some panelists on this webinar with me. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself, Erica. My name is Erica Bold, and I am the Membership Services Specialist for Division Four, which is the West Coast. Thank you, Erica. Um, Lily, go ahead and introduce yourself to us. Hi, I'm Lily Polly. I am a member of the Xi Lambda chapter, which is in the Missouri region. And I am also a regional officer, vice president of the Kappa district for Missouri. Fantastic. We appreciate having you here, Lily. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for okay. the opportunity. Yes. I'm so excited. Thank you. Okay, well, everyone that's joining, we do have a Q&A box. If you do have questions, please feel free to ask any questions that you have during this webinar, and Erica and myself will be happy to answer those for you. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next slide. We're gonna discuss our mission. The mission of Phi Theta Kappa is to recognize academic achievements of college students and to provide opportunities for them to grow as scholars and leaders. So it truly is to, our, our mission is truly to recognize your academic achievements and for the members of Phi Theta Kappa to grow as scholars and leaders. Um, Phi Theta Kappa's mission has essentially remained the same since we were founded in 1918, and that is to serve and to support college students. So we are getting ready to turn 100 years old. We are 100 this year, um, specifically in November. We will be 100 years old. So we've been around for quite a while. Okay, so who is Phi Theta Kappa? So we make up, um, we have this in invitation process that you probably did receive an invitation to join Phi Theta Kappa, and you may be wondering who um, the members are. And the Phi Theta Kappans represent a diverse group of students from an array of majors. As you'll see in this snapshot on the screen, 68% of our members complete a bachelor's degree or higher. You also see that Phi Theta Kappans have a 91% completion or transfer rate. And this means that 91% of our members either graduate from a community college or a technical college, or they even transfer to a four-year university. So this snapshot also, also points to a very high GPA among Phi Theta Kappa members. The average GPA of a, a PTK member is 3.6. This high GPA is indic indicative of a high caliber of students who join Phi Theta Kappa. They are hardworking and high achieving. You'll also see here that 73% of our members use collegefish.org to connect with recruiters from four-year four universities. And collegefish.org is an online tool specifically designed to help community college students plan their transfer to a four-year school. Finally, it is important to note that Phi Theta Kappa is not major specific. We serve all majors from business to nursing to liberal arts to social sciences. Okay, so where is Phi Theta Kappa? Now that you know a bit about who we are, uh, let's cover where Phi Theta Kappa is. Uh, we are an international honor society, and we have a approximately 1,300 chapters that span 50 states and nine nations. The US, Canada, Germany, Republic of Palau, Marshall Islands, Peru, Bur British Virgin Islands, um, that's just a few. Um, you'll see here that Phi Theta Kappa chapters belong to four different divisions. Each division houses chapters, in that specific geographic area. If you are a prospective member watching this, you can take a moment and locate your prospective division and get a better lay of the land. So we have division one, which is on the coast. We have division two, which is towards the southern part of the United States. 
We have Division Three, which Lily, our panelist, is a member of, uh, which is more your middle central part of the United States. And we have Division Four, which is your West Coast. So you can see where you live in your state to see what division you are a part of. Okay, so let's get to the nitty gritty here of am I eligible? Well, um, are you enrolled in a higher education institution with a PTK chapter? Um, most likely if you received an invitation to join that you are. We've covered our mission, who we are, and where we're located. And now we're going to discuss about how you become a member. Uh, it's important to emphasize that Phi Theta Kappa membership is by invitation only. So if you have received an invitation to accept membership from your Phi Theta Kappa chapter, that means that you've met the eligibility requirements of your local chapter. So what are those eligibility criteria? Phi Theta Kappa's constitution sets minimum standards for membership your eligibility GPA cannot be lower than a 3.0. You must have taken at least 12 credit hours for associates and bachelor's degree programs or six hours for a one year certificate degree program to be eligible. And you must be currently enrolled at a higher education institution with a Phi Theta Kappa chapter. The majority of chapters have a 3.5 eligibility GPA with a 3.25 maintenance GPA. So typically, most likely a chapter is going to have to be eligible to join, you must have a 3.5. And then once you join, you must maintain at least a 3.25 maintenance GPA to become be, to maintain your membership as a member. Now definitely check with your chapter if you're concerned about that, there may be different stipulations for each chapter. Um, and this criteria can be found in your chapter's bylaws. I mentioned the maintenance GPA and many chapters have implemented the maintenance GPA and this must be maintained while at your community college or technical college. If you're unsure what your chapter's eligibility criteria are, definitely check with your Phi Theta Kappa advisor and or your faculty or staff person on your campus and you can locate your Phi Theta Kappa advisors by state and college by going to ptk.org forward slash advisor search. Lily, I want you to discuss a little bit about when you received your invitation to join your chapter. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that process and how you joined? Definitely. So I started at St. Louis Community College, Merrimack, uh, fall of 2015, and I didn't take a full course load. So I was eligible fall of 2016. And I got the email invite and um, let's see. So I received an email and I, I, I didn't believe it. I'm like, what is this? I, and I was pretty sure it got sent to the wrong person, wrong inbox. And I was like, there's no way this is me. I don't qualify for that, right? But I looked into it farther from there because I'm like, you know, why not check it out? Went on the website and was still definitely interested, but I still had no idea what it was for sure. Luckily, uh, my chapter had uh, hosts and we still host PTK orientations. So that's for prospective members or, you know, members that just need to know more about PTK, stuff like that. And that was really helpful. All the possibility offers. Okay, great. All right, um, Erica, I think I'm going to pass this over to you now. And we're gonna go ahead and let you take over the next slide. Okay. Okay, some of the common reasons for not accepting membership. I have little or no time. Being a Phi Theta Kappa member, we do not require our members to participate in activities. That is one of the good things of being a Phi Theta Kappa member that does not, determine if you remain a Phi Theta Kappa member or not. We know that we have a lot of students that are full-time parents. We know that we have a lot of students that may work in the daytime and go to school at night, and we take all of that into consideration. However, we like to say here at Phi Theta Kappa headquarters that Phi Theta Kappa will give you as much as you put into it. 
the more you participate, the more you'll see results from Phi Theta Kappa. So that's something that we like for prospective students to keep in their mind, that if they're able to be involved in their local chapters, that's great. I know that Lily can attest to participation in her chapter. The more participants that you have for different events and activities, the more that students learn and appreciate the value of all of the skills that they obtain. A lot of students we know leave the community college, the two-year college, and go to four-year colleges, and that's under understandable. Once you accept membership into Phi Theta Kappa, no matter what college you attend, you will still be a Phi Theta Kappa member. That will never change. Also, you will also get soft skills such as communication skills needed for the workforce, just in case you decide to leave the two-year college and go directly into the workforce. So that's something that you should always keep in your mind. These skills are out here and available for you. I've never heard of PTK. A lot of students often get Phi Theta Kappa confused with other honor societies. However, Phi Theta Kappa is an international honor society. We have chapters across the country. We are in, we also have chapters outside of the country. So it's just a good organization to become a part of. If you're looking for a sense of family, if you're looking for a sense of achievement, this is a wonderful organization to become a part of. I cannot afford the membership. We have a lot of students that we that may be experiencing financial hardships and we understand that. We advise those students to go to their local Phi Theta Kappa chapter advisor and say, hey, I would love to become a member. However, the membership fee is just too much. Your advisor may be able to waive the local fee. They may be able to waive regional fees. That is something that you would have to contact them and let them know that you are in need of financial assistance. We also offer our Golden Opportunity Scholarship, which waives the international fee for membership, which is the $60 fee that you will pay once you accept membership. This is something that you also have to communicate to your Phi Theta Kappa advisor and say, hey, I heard that we that Phi Theta Kappa offers golden opportunity scholarships. Is it possible for me to be the recipient of the golden opportunity scholarship or can you nominate me for the golden opportunity scholarship? And your local Phi Theta Kappa advisor will be more than happy to help you. How can PTK help me when I complete school? Phi Theta Kappa offers letters of recommendation that a lot of students need once they, ex once they graduate from the community colleges and go into the work workforce, or they may need it when they are transferring to other schools. This can all be accessed by going, logging into your Phi Theta Kappa account. You will have access to unlimited letters of recommendation. We do not put a limit on the amount that you will be able to get from Phi Theta Kappa. So this is one of the benefits that will last forever. Once you are a Phi Theta Kappa member, you are a Phi Theta Kappa member for life. Polly, was there some, uh, Lily, was there something that you wanted to add? I'm sorry. Not in terms of that portion of it, no. I don't think oh, so. Okay. Okay, sounds great. Let's go to the next slide, please. Phi Theta Kappa structure. Okay, the local level. Here, this is where you guys are. We have the members, the advisors, the officers, and the alumni. So when you join Phi Theta Kappa, this is the level that you will be on, the local level. Now, above that, we have the regional level, which includes the regional coordinator, the regional officers, and the regional advisory board. Above the regional level is the international level. That is where Phi Theta Kappa staff lies, the international officers, and our board of directors. And I know, Lily, that you have some experience as a regional officer. Is there a could you give us a little bit of insight on your experiences? 
Definitely. I can also talk about uh, when I was chapter officer as well, if you'd like. Great. That's wonderful. Sure. So, um, so I joined fall of 2016 and figured eh, I'll stay inactive. And there's no need to do anything else. But I went to a meeting uh, at the time. Our chapter had something called like lead member meetings. So it was for officers and people who wanted to take more initiative and be more involved because that is completely optional. There's no obligation whatsoever. Once you put yourself in that position, yeah, you got to hold yourself to it for sure. Right. Uh, there was an opening for VP of Communications, Vice President of Communications for our chapter. Uh, chapters have different title variations and stuff for the positions. So I was in that position and at first, so I definitely felt at the bottom of the food chain, I'd say. It's kind of like, you know, the other offices had known each other for a while and right. been together for a considerable amount of time. Although I continued to work on trying to connect with them and understand them. And that was possible through HIA research and carrying out our projects. And of course, Catalyst, the international convention was one of the biggest opportunities for me to really bond with the officer team then. And then most of the officers, almost all of them graduated and transferred or they had other plans. So then for the 2017, 2018 school year, it was pretty much a fresh new officer team. We even had a fresh new advisor so it was, it seemed like intense at first, but it was really neat to be able to be a part of that, uh, kind of like that transition and just having, I don't know, having seen it in different stages is really neat to be able to kind of experience both. So out of both school years as a, uh, an officer, even though I was in the same position, it was still two different experiences and Again, it is what you make it. So if you're interested in being an officer, then go and do that and be involved. I decided to become regional officer fall 2017 at actually one of the regional conferences. Typically regions hold two conferences at least, I believe. And that was when I decided, hey, you know, I want to try, I'm going to push myself farther. I'm going to try this. So I ran for regional office and in the spring of this this past semester, spring semester, but of this year, I uh, became the vice president of the Kappa district for Missouri region. And it's just a whole nother experience. You definitely, I don't know, I've gained so much out of it. It's just like, it's hard, like I always say it's hard to describe Phi Theta Kappa because I mean, yeah, I can give you a definition or a history and background that that just doesn't do justice. And I think uh, just, it's definitely an experience, experience and whether you experience that as a member, officer, whatever level, it's definitely worth it. Thanks so much, Lily, for giving us that insight. And just as she stated, Phi Theta Kappa is an experience. She started out on the local level. She got involved in her chapter and said, hey, I think I can push myself a little further she got involved on the regional level. This is all what you make of it. The more time that you put into it, the more effort that you put into it, you'll see the results. You'll see how you've developed as a student, how your character has developed over time just by getting involved in all of the things that Phi Theta Kappa has to offer. Thank you so much for that insight, Lily. For sure, definitely. I want to share the experience so people know what it's about. Yes, thank you. Involvement. Induction ceremonies. This is what you will experience if you decide to become a Phi Theta Kappa member. They will induct you into Phi Theta Kappa but you will have that experience just to receive some type of recognition for all of the achievements that you've, uh, for all of your achievements. I know a lot of students decide to invite their parents, people that they think have contributed to their edu educational journey. All of those people will get a chance to come and experience your accomplishments with you. Chapter meetings and workshops. I know that Lily's chapter, 
do you guys have meetings once a month or we have, uh, every weekly. week? Weekly meetings. Yeah. Okay. All Lily chapters. Members. Okay. Okay. Some chapters have weekly meetings. Other chapters have monthly meetings. However, once again, it's not a requirement that you attend these meetings. We will love for you to join. That way you can enhance your experience with Phi Theta Kappa, but it is not a requirement. New member orientation. A lot of chapters have these just as we're having this Zoom meeting with you guys, they'll host, the chapters will host new member orientations just so students can get a feel of Phi Theta Kappa. They can obtain literature about Phi Theta Kappa and just view some of the chapters resources that are offered to their members. Awareness and recruiting. This week is Phi Theta Kappa's Awareness Week. Recruiting is something that Phi Theta Kappa does 365 days a year. We love for you guys to join us anytime that you want to accept membership. Our hands are extended to bring you in. So join, join, join. Fellowship and service events. Lily, what type of fellowship and service events do you guys do at your chapter? Uh, just recently, really recently, we had a scholarship workshop. So um, I think you'll talk more in depth about scholarships, I'm sure, a little yes. later. Um, and we, we hosted one pretty recently because the fall common scholarship application opened on September 15th. I don't know why it was a Saturday, but I was still excited no matter what. So I'm in the process of that right now. So it was really exciting to have that around that time. And we wanted to help prepare members that were interested in trying to obtain scholarships. Uh, I'll talk more about that after you talk about scholarships, because I know there's, you know, the whole PTK internal, external, all that jazz. For different events, we, uh, fellowship events, we got to, uh, so I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, and the City Museum's pretty well known around here for sure, and our VP of Fellowship was able to arrange that, that we go, and we went with other chapters, as uh, St. Louis Community College has multiple campuses, and each campus has their own chapter, so still the same school, though, if that makes sense, but it was really nice to be able to mingle with the other chapters because you don't always get to see them really you know you're on different campuses your classes are separate everything like that that was definitely a highlight of the spring semester for me for Good. us for meetings uh we usually have an agenda for meetings you know welcome uh introduce yourself if you're new and we'll let you know who we are sometimes sometimes it's the middle of the meeting of like oh hey by the way my name is you know whatever <laughs> uh different meetings though we usually have like a fun joining activity towards the end. So we'll block it for two hours, but we don't necessarily use the two hours. Usually it's just an hour, but we do like to have fun at the end, whether it's uh, playing like apples to apples. Uh, what We tried, tried playing jumbo sequence one time. Apparently five Theta captains can't solve it. I don't know, but it was great. We play Uno, there's food. Food is always great, right? Uh, we seem to have more attendance when there's food. Don't know why, geez. But really just, you can be as involved as you want. Like some people will stop by the meeting for just five minutes, 10 minutes. Some will be there the whole hour or whatever. Thanks so much, Lily, for sharing your experiences with your chapter and some of the events that you guys host at your chapter. And again, once you accept membership, this is something that your local Phi Theta Kappa chapter officers and advisors will let you know what all events they may have planned. I know some of the chapters have some things planned this week for Awareness Week. So this is something that you should definitely reach out to your local Phi Theta Kappa advisor about. Okay, additional benefits. Let's talk scholarships. Everyone wants to know about scholarships. Well, our fall scholarships are now open. These scholarships are for students that will be attending, well, transferring to four-year universities fall of 2019. And those scholarship apps will close November the 15th. I know just as Lily mentioned earlier that they held an event to help members fill out their scholarship app. Is that correct, Lily? Yeah, just kind of letting people know uh, what the application looks like and uh, I can go more in depth later about it, but 
we also oriented it towards people for not P2K too, in terms of general scholarship application, resume, stuff like that. Great. Also, regional and international events. The PTK International Convention, that is Catalyst, what Lily referred to a few minutes ago. That is the national convention that we have this coming year. It will be in Orlando, Florida. So we hope if you guys decide to accept membership that we'll see you there. We will definitely be there. Honors Institute is another it's another event that Phi Theta Kappa hosts to just enhance those skills that we have been talking about throughout our entire presentation. Regional conferences, Lily mentioned this also, that they host regional conferences and attendance to those events will give you a chance to communicate and meet other Phi Theta Kappa members that you may not be able to or have the opportunity to interact with all of the time. Officer training. I'm sure, Lily, you guys have training that you hold at your chapter. Could you give us a little insight about that? Yeah, so definitely with uh, the chapter officer team uh, changes, you know, pretty much every school year to almost like completely new. But uh, recently we've had kind of some people like stay a bit, which is nice because it helps with the transition. So for uh, the 2017-2018 school year, what was great was that in the summer, the previous officers and myself, um, we hosted an event for the incoming officers to uh, meet with the officer who was in their position and kind of learn what the different you know tasks and jobs were for that office position, different things that they're involved in. And it was really great because it was kind of a good time to kind of get to know everyone. I mean, if it's all new officers, um, I was the only one who was staying over, so I just like talked to myself. I'm like, "Remember, you should do this this time. Remember, don't do don't don't do that. That was a great idea you had. You should do that." Um, but really, having that kind of like mentorship within the transition of officers has been really helpful. Just for because people, if you get to the position, you it's fresh, new to you. You don't really know what you got yourself into, right? Um, but just really having that guidance helps. Thanks so much, Lily, for giving us that insight. One last thing that I want to recap, the letters of recommendation. We offer unlimited letters of recommendation. Some of you guys will be graduating this fall. Some of you all will be graduating in the spring. Letters of recommendation are vital to all college students. So please, as a member, take advantage of this opportunity um, Lily, did you want to speak a little more on scholarships or did you say definitely. anything? I definitely got a lot on scholarships. Great. Okay. So, um, I didn't think scholarships were for me. I'm like, that's not relevant. But at the past Catalyst, uh, the Centennial Celebration, which was passed this past April, um, I actually went down to the, um, what do they call it? kind of like the marketplace, past the marketplace where there was the senior college transfer fair. And just by walking through there, I decided that I do want to transfer. I think it's possible for me and that's something I want to do. So that was really exciting. That was definitely a shift. And then just in the past months, I've been preparing for the application. And um, let's see. Hmm. So with the workshop that we did, it was able, we gave examples of like what to put on your resume, what are good examples of this, making sure you get down, uh, start early for sure so you can brainstorm things. Uh, I, I'm trying to compile a list of all my volunteer experience and build from that, kind of be like, oh, this is a highlight from it that I want to put, make sure I put in this, stuff like that. And with scholarships, there's PTK scholarships, like internal and external so some come from ptk specifically and then others are what the universities or colleges offer from their funds to ptk students so at our workshop we talked a lot about uh someone's not unique but special to around st louis i don't know if any of you are in the missouri region st louis anything like that but webster university for example they literally give you a thousand dollars if you are in ptk 
and you uh, attend their school. On top of that, they have different scholarships that you can apply for. And one of our past officers actually received one of the scholarships and she loves it at Webster University. Uh, particularly to St. Louis for the Washington University St. Louis, there's a Elizabeth Danforth scholarship and that is unique to St. Louis. You have to have be from that area. But just like schools and universities, they have specific ones that, you know, like, they like PTK students, they're gonna do, you know, they're gonna put a lot of stops out for them. So looking out for schools that really have that. And then with, I'm applying for like external right now, the school that I wanna transfer to has one PTK scholarship, but I have to be a resident, uh, established residency before I can apply for that. So hopefully I'll do that at some point, but I am applying for the Gus White scholarships and a few others that I qualify for, but I got my heart set on the Gus White scholarship. Um, and really just with the uh, application and stuff like that, definitely PTK is gonna help you strengthen your application because you just ha you have all the experience. And when I first started PTK, I was like, oh, I'm not here for the scholarships, which is fine. I got, I've gotten a lot out of it. And also though, you really are able to build your experiences, make your application shine, you know, stuff like that. Um, um let's see yeah letters of recommendation always ask early you know ask ahead of time professors are busy they even tell you like don't nag them but they always like are saying like hey yeah you're gonna have to send me a reminder just so i don't forget you know so that's it's chill it's nice because you're just like yeah scholarships definitely a big thing college fish as you mentioned earlier definitely a good resource a lot of people describe college fish as uh a dating site for colleges. So you get to figure out which one fits for you. Definitely something that you should check out with your membership because it does come with your membership. Sorry, I had a little bit of technical difficulty. Um, that um, is great information, Lily. Um, I know you have put a lot of work into your membership and it literally, what you put into Phi Theta Kappa is what you get out of it. So if you simply just want to join for the recognition, that's fine. You can certainly join just to be recognized as an Honor Society member of Phi Theta Kappa. If you want to go further and be more active and involved and apply for scholarships and even get to the regional or international level, um, you can be in the regional level like Lily. She's the regional officer from Missouri. Or if you wanted to take it further and run for office for international, you can certainly do that. But it is honestly up to you. Participation is not mandatory. So if you would like to start being a member and just simply be a member to get your membership packet that has your membership certificate and your membership key pin and be able to have letters of recommendation at any time and just be able to put Phi Theta Kappa on your resume, that's perfectly fine. Or if you wanna be more involved, you can certainly reach out to your chapter and they can work with you to become more involved with your chapter and attend meetings and run for um, leadership positions and really fill out any applications for the scholarships. You really, it's really what you want to put into it. Um, I, I'm going to look at our questions here. Erica, I think you're answering some of them for me. Thank you so much. I was answering on the webinar and I think you guys could see some of the questions that I was answering. Um, do we have any that maybe we want to answer live? Erica, which ones are you answering right now? Okay, I'll do. I wonder if I would fit in or if this is just for the younger students. This is a great question, Barbara. Um, I'm gonna answer your question live. Uh, anybody can join. This is not just for the younger students. We, we are an honor society for all ages, all de developments of life. Um, anybody who is enrolled in their community college and has met the criteria to join, you've earned it. Definitely take advantage of that. This is something that will stay with you for life, even after you finish college and you go into the working world. This is something you can put on your resume. This We have letters of recommendation that you can also take with you if you're going on a job interview. This is something that will be with you for life. This is life-changing moments. Lily has done things that she did not think she would do, and therefore, this has changed her life. 
She didn't think she'd want to be in this for the scholarships. And look what happened. She is she's setting her goals and she is achieving them one by one. You can definitely reach out to your chapter, your chapter advisor, and talk to them more about opportunities available to you with your membership. So definitely use your local Phi Theta Kappa chapter and your Phi Theta Kappa advisor at your campus to help you look into more possibilities for your membership. They are there to help you and to assist you. And um, we're here at headquarters. We're in Jackson, Mississippi, but your Phi Theta Kappa advisor is on your college campus. So, um, Barbara, I hope that answers your question. This is for all age ranges, and you will find that within your chapter. You will see a little bit of everybody in your chapter. For sure. Yes. Do what, Erica? Okay, you answered that one? No. Okay, I'm going to answer Mary's. Um, so there are no scholarship opportunities unless you plan to transfer to a four-year college. Nothing available to two-year students. Um, Mary, yes, right now the four-year college application is open, but we do have scholarship opportunities for students who stay at the community college level. Those open in the spring. So when you come back in January, definitely go on our website when those applications open, and those are the ones that you will want to apply for. So the fall is for students who plan to transfer to a four-year college, and in the spring, those are for students who plan on staying at the community college. So definitely check back when you come back after uh, winter break for the students staying at the two-year colleges. Yeah, I've seen there's really some great ones for completing your associates. I looked into those for a while. Yes, see, absolutely. Lily has checked out these scholarship opportunities and they are there. Um, should I go ahead and answer Kristen's? Are you, I'm typing now. You're typing Kristen's? Like okay. Okay, I'm gonna check the chat. We're, we're knocking out these questions. You guys are asking great questions today. Okay. So let's see here. Um, what did I answer already? Erica, you answered that one. Autumn says she feels honored to have received this invitation. And I'm a little like Lily when it comes to thinking they sent the wrong person the invite. Um, no, you were invited because you achieved it and you earned it. You earned this. This is something you need to reward yourself with and accept that invitation. So Autumn, we hope to see you a member soon. Be like Lily and accept that invitation. You don't know where it's going to take you, but I promise you it will take you far. Um, okay, let's see here. All right, um, Rhea, thank you. Okay, go ahead, Erica. I'll mute myself so you can answer one. Thanks, Paige. Hannah Koshi, say, her question is, so I'm planning to move to a four-year university next fall. When should I apply for scholarships? Yeah. Hannah, your time is now. <laughs> Please join now so that you can apply for scholarships. Anyone that is planning, Kayla, I think has the same question maybe, but anyone that is planning on transferring to a four-year university fall of 2019, your time is now. Please visit our scholarships tab located at www.ptk.org. Again, www.ptk.org and click the scholarships tab on the under that tab you will see a list of all of the scholarships that you can apply for and the requirement for each. So please Hannah go and visit the, our website so that you can view those scholarships. There we go. I was muted. I couldn't unmute. Um, okay, let's see. Definitely take advantage of those scholarships that are available. They do close on November 15th. So the scholarship application for students who plan to transfer to a four-year college next year do close on November 15th. So if you think that's something you want to start that application process on, definitely accept your membership and talk with your Phi Theta Kappa advisor on campus and get in there and fill in that um, application. And if you have questions, our scholarship team is available at any time. You could definitely reach out to them. Their contact information is on the scholarship tab as well. Um, let's see, do we have any other questions? 
Um, Mary says, thank you. If classes start in January, well, I need to look into that around December. Um, Mary, for the spring scholarships, they open up usually around February, March timeframe. So they send out communications to all members about that when they do open those applications and definitely keep checking the website and you will see the apply now button appear for you to apply for those um, during that time frame. Okay, let's see here. Are there any scholarships available for four year schools until that November deadline? There aren't any other scholarships throughout the year. Um, Phi Theta Kappa administered scholarships. We have um, during this time frame. If you're looking for four-year schools that offer scholarships, there's two types of scholarships. There's Phi Theta Kappa administered scholarships and there are transfer scholarships. I think you may be referring to a transfer scholarship and I think Lily touched on that a little bit as well. Um, the four-year colleges want Phi Theta Kappa members on their campus. So most of them do offer a Phi Theta Kappa transfer scholarship. They all vary. The money comes from the college to be applied to your tuition. So that's something you'll have to talk to the four-year colleges about and ask them, do you have a do you offer a Phi Theta Kappa transfer scholarship? And most of them do, um, not all, but most do recognize Phi Theta Kappa and offer that scholarship. But that money comes from the college, not us. We have the Phi Theta Kappa administered scholarships on our website. Um, if that's not something you're looking for, then definitely check with the four-year college to see if they offer a scholarship for students who are Phi Theta Kappa members. And that's something that they will be able to talk to you about. Yeah, there seems to be a lot definitely related to scholarships. I can yeah. say more on that if you help. Yes, watch. go for it. Yes, Lily, tell us. So I look, I see some of the questions like there's definitely ones in the spring to help you actually one of the ones that I looked at, but I didn't want to stay another entire year for a uh, community college is the uh, Geico pathway to completion that actually is to help you finish your two year degree your associates, whether or not you take two years, you know, I, I've taken four years to get this so it's whatever, but no, there are ones that uh, you can get while you're still in community college to help you uh, finish your two years. Um, let's see, what are other, some of them let's definitely see. Let's, around let's like see. clarifying things for sure. Um, there are no hidden fees, we promise, at mm -hmm. least I can promise that, I don't know. Yeah, no, there's not. Once you accept your membership and pay your membership fee, we will never expect you to pay that again. So there are no hidden fees. Um, we do not charge you to fill out our scholarship applications. Those are free for members. You just fill out the application and submit it. Um, it may ask you to get a letter or a transcript to supply with it, but never any um, fees involved. Um, so there are no hidden fees in that application process. Um, Let's see, Lily, you, did you say, did you talk more about, did you do a workshop for scholarships? Yes, we did. Okay, did you, did, did you talk about that? Or did you want to say any more about how your, was that. it with your region or was it with your chapter? Uh, chapter and then just open to anyone on our campus. Okay, so you did a workshop on how to fill out the applications, is that correct? Yeah, and uh, yeah. how to find, kind of how to navigate College Fish and set that up. Yes. Um, so College Fish is really good for finding ones if you don't know whether the school uh, offers it or you have a certain school in mind and you want to look that up, it will tell you basically what kind of scholarships uh, okay. there are. That's great. Okay. So, and definitely our scholarship department does do webinars. They are, they do webinars just like this one to answer your questions. They are also available at any time um, that you may have questions. You can definitely go to the scholarship tab and read all about the different applications that are available to you. And it will maybe help answer some of your questions as well. Um, Harold is asking, how can I register for membership after receiving the invitation? So Harold, um, that's a great question. You can definitely look at your invitation that you received from your Phi Theta Kappa chapter. It will explain how to accept your membership. Most likely what it will tell you is you may need to go to the website and accept your membership through a link on the website and 
pay for your membership on the website. If that's not clear in your invitation, definitely reach out to your advisor at your campus. If you don't know who that is, you can go to our website and search for your Phi Theta Kappa advisor at ptk.org forward slash advisor search and they will be able to get you connected with accepting your membership. Um, and also, we do have the Golden Opportunity Scholarship available, so if you do need, if you are in need of financial assistance, definitely talk to your Phi Theta Kappa advisor to see if that's something that you would be interested in um, being nominated for. Um, that would be able to maybe assist waiving part of your fee if that's available. Now, we can't promise it to everybody, but sometimes um, there will be an opportunity available. Okay, and for the fees, those are, they vary. Um, your invitation may state something than another chapter's invitation. Definitely reach out to your Phi Theta Kappa advisor on your campus to find out what your membership fee is. We do have three portions of that fee. There's the international fee, which is $60. Then uh, you have a regional fee, which is your region, typically your state that you live in. They have a portion, which is usually about $5, 5 to $10, varying on where you are. And then you do have a chapter fee for your chapter. So definitely talk to your Phi Theta Kappa advisor for a definite, a definite membership fee that you will be um, needing to pay. It's a one-time fee to join Phi Theta Kappa for your lifetime membership. Um, let's see, what other questions do we have? Erica, what else do we have? Do you see anything? Um, Okay, I see Jim asking to clarify the scholarships for the spring are only for students past the two-year program. So the spring students, the students um, that would need to apply for the spring scholarships are for students who are continuing at the two-year college next year. So if you are continuing to be at the two-year college or your college that you're a member at next year, you would then be able to apply for those scholarships then. Um, right now, the scholarships that are open are for students who plan to transfer next year to a four-year college. So definitely, if you are trans, if you're still continuing at the two-year college, definitely look into the spring application. Um, I think, let's see here. What semester can the scholarship be applied to for the application submitted for spring 2019? Um, Caitlin, that's a more specific question, I think, for scholarships. I don't know much about when the applications are, are judged between the time frame of them being judged and then the monies awarded to the recipients, uh, because that's not my department. But I do know it's a good about eight months between, you know, the, the to include the judging and the awarding of the money. So it takes quite a while for that process. We don't do the judging here in office. They do the judging, outsource it to the donors and um, people who don't know you that do the judging. So that takes some time, but the scholarship department is very good at communicating all of those different aspects once you submit your application. They are very good at communicating that information to you and keeping you informed on where you are in your process with your application and the judging and then the awarding. So as long as um, you maintain communication with them, you'll definitely know that information. What, um, let's see here, what, what is next? What is the likelihood of being awarded scholarships? How much does the average member receive in scholarships throughout the membership? Um, Krista, that's um, dependent on the student and how many scholarships you are um, going to apply for and are eligible for, but the more involved you are, within your school, your community, or with your chapter, the more likely you'll be a contender for a scholarship. So definitely look on our website. Once you're a member, you have resources there that you can look at. Our, scholars, our scholarship team has put together a lot of documents and webinars that they've saved on our website that you can watch to help walk you through um, having a good application, making sure your application is an award-winning application. So they definitely provide those resources. And like Lily stated, they did a workshop. Their chapter did a workshop to help their members fill out applications so that they could be good contenders for winning. So definitely um, be involved with your chapter. Take on, upon those opportunities with um, 
beefing up those those applications and resumes. So definitely work with your chapter, um, be involved in your community, and you shouldn't have any problem at all. I think that might be all of our questions. Um, I think that might be all of them. Lily, I, I appreciate you being here with us. You have been a great source of knowledge College, and we appreciate you telling us about all of your experiences of being a member and a researcher. And is there anything else that you would like to add? Yeah, just kind of to um, tell you, like, definitely accept membership. I think with community college or junior colleges, technical colleges, there can kind of be uh, maybe it's still a stigma around there. But I know for me, through Phi Theta Kappa, I've learned that, you know, it really takes strength to go to community college. And the rewards are more than worthwhile. And as I said earlier, Phi Theta Kappa isn't something you can describe to anyone. Me trying to describe it to my mom and why I wanted to join, that conversation was just going in circles. But, you know, rather, uh, Phi Theta Kappa is an experience. And if you have the chance to become a Phi Theta Kappa, I encourage you to do it. And I encourage you to go deep into it, go beyond the basic membership, because who knows where you'll go. So really, membership matters a ton and just you really I think it's an experience that you can either dive into and that's what I encourage just you know absolutely I love how you stated membership matters it really does Erica do you have anything you'd like to add thank you guys so much for joining us we really hope that you accept this invitation if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Our email address located on our on the screen now. We also have our phone number located there also. So if you have any additional questions that you didn't think of during this meeting, just give us a call. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Lily, so much. Everyone, go accept your invitations. Become members of Phi Theta Kappa. We are turning 100 years old this year, and we want you to be part of something extremely special. Reward yourself. You achieved it. Thank you guys so much, and we appreciate you. Thank you.